All right, next project do because it's cold outside and it's cold everywhere else, but I have heat in my shop. So I'm going to build a over the toilet cabinet right there. So it's got a kind of here's the type of cabinets I've got going on in here. Kind of a shaker slash what you want to call it girl custom next specials i've got the hardware i bought whenever i bought this stuff so i've got all everything i need it's all inset doors are all inset it's very simple there's no there's no codes or anything it's real simple I got the cabinet planned out on my CAD software right here. There's my CAD software. It's my, uh, it's very, it's proprietary. You can't, uh, you can't use it. But anyway, so this is my red oak, which will match what's in there. So I gotta dig all, I gotta dig some boards out. We'll see what I can come up with. All right, I dug some wood out. Some of it's a little narrow, but since it's kind of going in there where you can't see the sides, I'll probably glue up the the sides, even though it's only eight inches. A lot of these are like six inches. I can I can probably get them down. I'll glue them up, make them eight inches, and then I'll use these wider boards. Like that one right there will be, I think I can get probably both the cabinet door fronts out of this dude right there. And then I can use the this for like the bottom shelf because you'll see that as you look onto it. So I think that'll work. And this wood was all free, so it's not like it's costing me anything other than labor. So all right, I'm gonna get to milling. So these boards are not the straightest around. So I'll come through. So this one should be 36. I'm going to cut it to 44. I'm going to have some waste, but it's less waste than if I try to mill it first. So that gets the square part made, with the cross brace. <coughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get these ready to mill up, get them squared up, glued up, and then we'll work out the other ones. All right, it's time to start jointing these things. So if your if your board's pretty fairly straight, even if it's bowed a little bit, as long as it Upwards, you can you can join it pretty good. It's not going to be that bad, but like this one right here that's on the light edge, basically on both sides, it'd take forever. So what I like to do is kind of line it up with the look at your look at your joint or your uh, your wood and kind of line it up with your. Market. And I just freehand it with circular saw. And then I join it. So tightened up. The wind is probably pretty old. I should probably change it out. But it'll work. And just kind of freehand it, pull that line, and then, then we'll join it after that. Alright, so that's a straight enough edge. We can joint that and then trim this down to whatever, whatever we need. The 
rest of these, she's gonna look at them. So like this one here, see that one's gonna be pretty up to joint. It's got a pretty big bow here. It bows in quite a bit here. So the same thing, I'll, I'll get a straight edge and I'll trim this down to where I could use a little easier to join. So I'll just check, go through and figure out, check some of these. That one should be good. So I'm going to join two faces. I'm going to join the edge and one face, and then I'll run it through planer to get the other side. Um, actually, one side I'll probably I'll come back with a table saw and cut it down to a particular size before I run it through the planer, but uh, mainly it's going to get two faces down here. All the edges done on the border, and then one of the cabinet doors. I'm going to go think we'll set up the table saw and trim these down a little bit, get one side square, and then we'll run it through the joiner again so we can get a gluing edge, and then uh, we'll glue them overnight. So I like to offset these a little bit so that uh, since I gave them a few more inches <clears throat> overall, if you offset them a little bit when you run through the planer, it gives you that much more room for your snipe. You know, if you end up getting a little bit of there, that uh, two inches there and the offset here can you know, overall that's two inches, that's two inches, that gives you four more inches. So um, I was offsetting a little bit. And then, you know, I'm going to use some biscuits just to keep it straight. Um, and then try to use, like, say, this is going to be, this is the key, which is going to be 28 inches. So you want to make sure you don't put your biscuits where you're going to need to cut it. So I'm going to go with. Here, here, here. I'm going to put one there and there just to keep it straight. Okay, let's cut off. I could dial this, but the biscuit one is a lot easier.
All right, I got uh, the panels I made the other night, got them out. I got the one last panel, it's gluing up right now. Um, got, I need to get some material for the face frame and I'm gonna have to go down and dig some more out because the cabinets I've got in there now have a lot tighter grain, more of a quarter or even a some kind of a riff sawn straight grain look. So, and most of, a lot of this is kind of flat sawn looking, so it won't look right. The sides, as I said, it's not really going to matter because you, you, you're hardly going to be able to see the sides because they're, you know, going to be like four or six inches away from the wall. So those, I just would kind of burn it up some of the some of the lumber I have in here. Um, and that's actually kind of why I used biscuits on this. Um, normally I would have just planed it all down to a thickness and I would have uh, just, you know, but glued it. But um, since this is real wavy, it's got a lot of uh, waves like right there from the bandsaw, hit that knot, but it'll, it'll come out okay. Once I, uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll joint it. I'll go through and joint it one more time on this side and then I'll run it through the planer to get it to, to thickness. But um, if you are doing panels with like this, I recommend either marking it or what I like to do is leave one biscuit exposed so you can see where your biscuits are because I've forgotten and I've ended up planning through my biscuits and ruining my boards. Um, so you can mark them. Um, if you do mark them, mark them on the ends. Um, so you, like if you try to do this, if you try to mark it on the side here, you might end up jointing that or ripping it off and you won't have it. So I would mark it on this end. That way you, it's there until you cut it off to, to length. So, all right, I'm going to let that set up and I'll run down to the uh, storage container and see if I can find some better looking red oak. All right, I don't have much red oak left. That's actually my last bit of red oak. I need to get me another tree. Um, so here, that's, uh, that's white oak. That back there is pin oak. Most people don't use it, but there's a big old tree that fell down in a storm. I hate to see it go to waste. So I'm actually using that for all my base trim. It's, um, it, I'm staining it dark, so you really can't tell. It has real dark lines of... It's got some fungus in it from as it was growing. It's common with the pit oaks. The grain's real fat, so a lot of it's quarter sawn. Um, so it, you know, it, it, there, it's like twice the size. The grains are like twice the size of the red oak. So it did okay. I did, I did my base trim in a couple of my bedrooms, and I put it up next to the red oak, and it's a little bit darker, but it's fine. It was free, so. And then this stacks walnut. Um, a lot of it checked real bad. Um, I screwed those on there to try to stop it. But I've got a few decent slabs. Most of that's going to be kitchen cabinets. So most of it's probably a heavy five quarters, if not six quarters, just for giving me a little bit extra playing room. And it's got some four by fours for some, uh, I'm going to do some posts for the cabinets. Same with the white oak i'm gonna do white oak and walnut for my kitchen cabinets so but here's what i got for my red oak some of these boards don't look very good but for the face frame and as small as this is i can section out some two inch pieces in here out of some of this tight grain it's not straight necessarily but it's it's tight grain so it'll match even in this one it's pretty narrow but i can almost get I don't know if I'll be able to get four inches out of that. Maybe. It'll be close. And then these two here, a little bit wider. Those are about probably six inches. That one tapers down. But hopefully I can get the cabinet doors out of these two. And then this would be the face frame and the cabinet door frame. So like this one here is in real. It's not a very good board. Most people probably throw that away. But it's got some sections in here. Like it's only, the cabinet's only going to be 28 inches wide. So I can probably get 28 inches of straight grain here and here, two inches wide. And then the rest will probably be firewood because it's, it's split real bad. It's not going to be much good. The other side's not any better. So, eh, it's free. 
how can I, can't really complain. So right, I'm gonna just carry it up there and we'll start cutting it down to size. I right, got everything up. And so here's what I did is use my fancy dancy drawing here. I just kind of rough out each piece and I'll put a letter on it, um, on each piece. And as I find a board, I can get that piece out of like here, this is I, and I oversize it quite a bit. So like that knot will end up getting cut off. Um, and also I'll trim all these down, get them all cleaned up. Um, like this one here, I should be able to get both F and K and they're the same size board. Hopefully I can. It's about five inches. I need about two two inch pieces. So we'll see if it cooperates or not, but that'll get all of the face frame done. And then I should actually, some of these scraps I'll actually be able to use for the frame of the cabinet door. Like this piece, I've only gotten this one out of. So I've got all of that, but even this one here, there's not much usable down here, but those cabinet doors are only going to end up being probably 10 inches wide. So I can easily get a couple, several 10 inch pieces here and probably even some from down there. It's a, a sturdy grain just to use as much as this as I can. So, all right, well, I'm going to get set up, get these chopped down to size and uh, get them milled up and ready to go. way too it's uh one was it's built out like this so on the it'll, I'll, it'll take forever to I'll probably have to remove too much material so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and straighten it up with the just with the circular saw to get a uh, uh, little bit less waste Got some board picked out for the doors. So I need four pieces at eight inch, which I should be able to get here. I'll, I'll do them in 16 inch sections and cut them in half. And then I'll need four 24s. I'm not sh this will be iffy. I might have to get another board, but I'm hoping I can get two here and two here. But this is real close. That's may not work we'll see and then i actually found one with fairly straight grain that i can just do one piece for the actual door so it needs to be the doors are going to be about a little over nine because the uh rail is eight inches so it's probably about probably eight and a half ish so we'll go down to nine and this sucker is 11 inches. This edge here is not real straight though. So it's, it's more of a rift zone. Can't really see the grain, but that's pretty straight. It's a little wider than the, uh, the face frame and stuff, but this will work. And that'll be 24 inches long. I'll do probably three inches extra. Uh, the ends are gonna be, um, shake down to fit in the uh for a panel so that'll turn off some of the snipes so i'll go about 
I'll be 27. That gives me some extra. There's one. And then two. Get those trimmed up and that will be just about everything cut down to size. I'll have some scraps that I'll use because I'm going to need some back bracing on the inside of the cabinet. I'm not going to put a back on it. Um, I just, I don't a lot of times. So it's plywood I don't want to mess with. So I'll run like on the inside, I'll run a brace across the back here to screw it into the wall. And then down here, I'll be able to use, I'll do the same thing. I'll run a brace across the bottom and then that'll screw in to the wall there and I'll hang it and get these cut down to size. So that should be all the main components rough cut. Now we gotta just go through and rejoint the sides of the panels I glued up. Um, get those smooth on one side, and I'll trim them down closer to the rough side, or final dimensions. I'll still, I said, I'll leave everything a little bit long until I'm completely done. And, uh, <clears throat> On those, I could just run them through the table saw because the, the back side won't be seen. It doesn't, doesn't need to be planed or sanded. <coughs> so I'll uh, get to doing that. Should be jointed that should be it now i'm just gonna get everything run through the planer get it milled down to the right thickness and then start cutting stuff up and putting it together let's see if my uh planer blades are any good though it's been a while since i used them 